Chancellor, I present to you Dr. Martin Lushka for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Martin is a distinguished member of an alumni community that, as we have heard, numbers 150,000 members across the globe. As we recognize his achievements through this award, we also acknowledge and celebrate the wider successes of all Lancaster graduates and the important part they continue to play in the life of our university. Martin Lushka is a Czech psychologist and director of the Center for Palliative Care in Prague, the first research center of its kind in the Czech Republic. Martin's work there has drawn great interest from around the globe, and he is widely regarded as one of the most outstanding emerging leaders in palliative care in Europe. He is also an assistant professor at the Charles University in Prague and research secretary to the Czech Society for Palliative Medicine. Martin's interest in palliative care began as an undergraduate when he learned about the existential psychotherapy and the work of Rollo May and Irvin Yalom. In, in existential psychotherapy, death is one of the fundamental givens of existence which every person must deal with. Martin was studying a number of different psychological theories at the time and this approach made the most sense to him. Looking to see if anybody used this perspective in clinical work, palliative care was the obvious first place to go. Martin attended a two-year international training course in paediatric palliative care organized by an excellent hospice in Bratislava called the Flicker. And as he describes, it started a fire in my heart which has still not gone out. At Lancaster, Martin undertook a full-time PhD focusing on mapping the development of palliative care in Europe as part of the European Commission-funded project EuroImpact under the Marie Curie Actions of Framework 7 program. On successful completion, he returned to Prague, where he established the Centre of Palliative Care, an outstanding achievement in its own right. Martin worked tirelessly to secure philanthropic funding for this project, employing a small team, developing collaborative working relationships with clinical leaders across the country, and creating an exciting research agenda. His approach is highly innovative, an example being the design of an online game to promote individualised advanced care planning in the population. Martin's success has been achieved in a country without a strong record of palliative care services and a culture where discussions of death and dying are still largely taboo. In 2015, Martin obtained a highly prestigious and competitive Fulbright Fellowship to undertake research on advanced care planning with Professor Sean Morrison at the National Palliative Care Center, Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. In 2016, his outstanding achievements were recognized by the European Association for Palliative Care's Young Investigator Award. The following year, he was sponsored to undertake a six-month palliative care education and practice program at Harvard Medical School and shortlisted for an Obama Foundation Fellowship. An inspirational and engaging speaker, Martin demonstrates determination and dr drive combined with modesty, humor, and compassion. Fondly remembered by colleagues at Lancaster, he participated in all aspects of student life while he was here, including, as a keen climber, regular visits to the university's sports center's climbing wall. He embodies Lancaster's mission to improve the world and to ensure that our research outputs act as positive forces for change. The range of Martin Lushka's achievements over the last decade should act as a reminder to each of you graduating today that you too can be successful with commitment and dedication. In reaching for success, we hope that you will make the most of your Lancaster qualifications, not only to better yourselves, but also to benefit your families, your university, and the wider communities in which you live and work. Chancellor, it is my honor to present Martin Lushka for the award of Outstanding Alumnus of the Year. Chancellor, fellow members of the university, honored guests. It is such an honor and privilege to uh, stand here in front of you today receiving this award. During my years at Lancaster, I met and learned about so many 
inspiring and clever people, fellows of our academic community, that I was sincerely speechless when I got the letter from the university that I was selected for this prestigious award. It is called Outstanding Alumni Award, and it made me think about what the word outstanding really means to me, about outstanding moments which I had the chance to experience, and all the outstanding people who have been supporting me and standing behind me all my life. If I may, I would like to use this opportunity to share some of these thoughts with you. A few weeks ago, my country celebrated 30 years from the Velvet Revolution, when the communist regime collapsed and the Czechoslovakian people could take their lives back into their hands. During the previous 40 years of communist era, having the ambition to be outstanding was a risky thing. The safe way was to remain invisible, to lay low, and to do what you have, you have been told to do. And people, including many students and members of underground academic community, who were brave enough to stand out of the crowd, were often forced to quit their studies and jobs or to collaborate with the regime. Many of those who were brave enough to stand out during protests in 1989 were dispersed by state police, beaten or imprisoned. I was four years old in 1989, and most of what I know about those times comes from books and from my parents. But in the last month, since I received the letter from the uni, I've been thinking a lot about how lucky I am that being outstanding does not require that much risk today. Honestly, the most dangerous part of my journey to this speech today was to learn how to drive a European car on the left side of the road in this weather. However, having said that, I think it still requires some courage and determination to stand out for people of my generation too. Compared to the generation of my parents, we have only ourselves to blame for not using the opportunities that lie in front of us. We all had the amazing chance to deepen our skills and knowledge by learning from people at one of the best universities in the UK. We had a chance to build friendships with really clever people from all around the world. When I was accepted for my PhD, in one of the prospects which I received was written that the role of the university is not only to transfer knowledge, but to prepare students for successful and valuable lives. And I believe that this was meant sincerely and that Lancaster truly follows this goal. And so we should be clear, if somebody can make a difference in the world today, it is us. We have been given the best possible starting position. Of course, it's not always easy. Great things are born in pain. Uh, when I returned to my country after I finished the PhD, I was super optimistic, full of enthusiasm, and 100% sure that my plan how to change the healthcare system will work just like that. Six months later, I was exhausted, lonely, financially broke, and I clearly remember myself sitting in the kitchen asking my wife whether it was a mistake actually to coming back to the Czech Republic. However, I think that the PhD study was, beside other things, a very good practice in endurance and determination, and everything turned out well at the end of the day as I kept pushing, and also thanks to the people who believed in me and supported me to remain hopeful. Václav Havel, our, our first democratic president after the Velvet Revolution, once said that hope is not the same thing as optimism. It is not the conviction that something will turn out well, but the certainty that something makes sense regardless of how it turns out. Keeping this in mind, I think that we should dare to aim high, that this is the risk which we should be brave enough to take today. And it doesn't have to be winning a Nobel Prize, although that would be definitely a welcome addition to Lancaster alumni selection of achievements. I work in palliative care, which aims to help seriously ill people sustain the best quality of life as long as possible and to die peacefully and with dignity. What we see in people at the end of their life is not bragging about their financial success or PhDs or the number of projects they successfully led. It usually comes back to very simple things, such as relationships, joyful memories, opportunity to forgive. And many dying patients also strive to find the meaning in their lives based on how well they use their potential, whether they are leaving something valuable behind them. I believe that people who have been privileged by education and all the opportunities that we have should really think about this seriously and well in advance 
to avoid frustration and desperation later when we will be reviewing our own lives. Sometimes people ask me how can we work in such a depressive field and I always say that it is actually a privilege to accompany people in those very vulnerable and important moments of their lives and that every encounter with somebody at the end of life is also reminding myself that the clock is ticking also for me and that I should use my time wisely as it flies so quickly. Finally, I would like to mention a few people who should really be standing here with me holding this award because it's their achievement as much as mine. First, my PhD supervisors, Professor Sheila Payne and Dr. Sarah Brelli, who were the best mentors I could wish for and who have been supporting me over the years, even after I finished my PhD. I believe that in reality, it's not the beautiful award-winning student halls, but professors such as Sheila and Sarah who really make, who really make this university such an amazing place to study. I want to thank my parents who helped me and my siblings to realize that we can do everything if we try hard enough. And also to my wife, who has been here with me for 15 years uh, and is probably watching this at home with our fur, three little girls. Uh, Blanca, you have been behind all my success and I love you. So I wish you all the best of luck for your future careers. I congratulate you on your achievement, which you are celebrating today and best wishes for the rest of your lives. And remember, the clock is ticking. Thank you.